Hello everyone, my name is Marina. Welcome to my Holiday Addict channel. Now, cauliflower. Salad nice, I'm trying the cauliflower. This is probably the coolest cafe near I've seen. We are in Glasgow, in Scotland. When people talk about cities in Scotland, the famously pretty streets of Edinburgh usually steal the limelight. Despite Glasgow being the country's largest city in terms of size and population, there is a perception that Glasgow is rough and it can be dangerous. But is it really that bad? Well, Glasgow has undergone significant redevelopment and improvement in recent years with the effort to enhance public spaces, cultural offering and infrastructure. You can really see that. My impression that Glasgow is a very vibrant and has an interesting places to see. So, let's see what Glasgow can offer to a visitor like me. Unfortunately, they're putting all the Christmas decorations up. Yes, yes, I know, it's not even end of, not even November yet, it's only end of October, but it's a lot of scaffolding around. The University of Glasgow was founded in 1451, and it is in the top 100 best universities in the world. But we didn't go there because of that. Building itself, this is what attracted us. This building was designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott and built in 1864 to 1870. When we were walking around and enjoyed the beauty of it, I thought Harry Potter would pop out at any time. buildings and beaches like this won't bring students to the university, I don't know what else. Uh, how amazing to study here. Look at this art.
yesterday but without the rain it's still a bit moody but at least it's dry yesterday we got soaked we're going to see now oh, well Grove Art Gallery Museum it's one of the top recommended things to do in Glasgow so I will be the judge of it Kelville Grove Art Gallery and Museum opened in 1901 and it's a lovely historical building set within the park area, paths and ponds and statues. By the way, in 2020 it was ranked in Lonely Planet's top 500 experiences in the world. This is an amazing museum, but what I'm mostly fascinated is by these hanging faces Every single one have its own expression. This is so cool. This museum is free and you definitely should visit. This is a fantastic museum. A lot of beautiful and interesting things to see. There is a coffee shop and a souvenir shop. You can easily spend a full day here especially on a rainy day like we had today. Glasgow is home to a collection of vibrant and impressive street art murals located through the city. The reason and mural trail was created, which you can follow, you should be able to complete it in about three hours, so there is a lot walking involved, so be prepared for a trek, but it will worth it. They are fantastic. You need to know that murals have temporary homes throughout the city. Construction may mean that some artwork was removed, but don't worry, the new one is being added all the time. You can get a self-guided tour in Google Map. We visited Glasgow in October 2021, just before Climate Change Conference. So, unfortunately, some of the places and some of the museums were closed and a lot of building going on. I think they just tried tightening up the city. But it didn't stop us having a good time. We wandered around the streets and just enjoyed the magnificent architecture of Glasgow. The population of Glasgow is 600,000 people. But if you were to pop in into the local time machine and travel back to 1938, you will find Glasgow had far more people back then. In its peak, it housed more than 1.1 million residents. But unfortunately, a lot of people moved out from pollution and noise and to found jobs somewhere else. We are inside the Glasgow Cathedral. Entrance is free, but you do need to go online and kind of buy a ticket. You don't pay for it, but you have to enter your information and the email your tickets. It's sort of like a QR code. Without it, you can come in. And between 12 and 1, it's closing for lunch. So if you come here, make sure you come before or after. The oldest building in all of Glasgow and the oldest cathedral in all of Scotland. And very impressive and very beautiful. Very well preserved with even some of the oldest dated back to 1197 still can be seen. This is a definitely massive one in Glasgow. It was dedicated to St. Kentinger, also known as St. Mungo, who is the pa patron saint of Glasgow. He believed to have been the first bishop of the area. He influence spread widely and it's thought that he was buried on the cathedral grounds around 1612. We are in the Glasgow necropolis. I'm going to try to talk a bit. But it's very windy, so I hope you can hear something. And yes, for some people, walking around the cemetery is not a great day out. But this one is a little bit different. I mean, look at all of this. How amazing. How much money people spent in memory of their loved ones. Most 
most of these tombstones, they're not that old. Mid or late 1800s. But the amount of money spent on some of it. Look at this one, these two statues. Then there's another statue inside. Can you see it? Is another one? Big one inside. It's okay if you've got the money, but you know, not everybody who built this had the money, so they sometimes borrow it. Can you imagine these days, you will say to your family, you know what, remortgage your house because I want some Greek statues on my grave. visiting Glasgow Cathedral and the Necropolis, take the time to appreciate its historical significance, stunning architecture and the peaceful atmosphere. Behind me, uh, Glasgow Botanical Gardens. It's a free to get in. It's quite small, but it's interesting to look around. Apparently, there's a lot of really nice walks so we're going to explore one of them. Another free activity you can get engaged is to take some time to explore the botanical gardens, which are open free of charge every day of the year. I love the impressive iron walk in the Kimball Palace, which is a famous Victorian glass house within the gardens, with the impressive collection of exotic plants. The Glasgow Botanical Gardens were established in 1817 and were originally created to supply the University of Glasgow with medical plants. Very pretty, slightly run down and dirty Victorian bridge. Now gardens cover over 27 acres and become a popular place to visit. One of the best parts of coming in October is the colors of the trees. It's really nice, very bright. So, after two days in Glasgow, did we still think that Glasgow is rough? Keep in mind that individual experiences can differ and what one person consider rough might be not be the same for someone else. We love the city and we had a great time there. But I would stay away from a train station area and it didn't really felt relaxed and safe in the evening. A lot of shouting and loud drinking going on and surprisingly amount of homeless and uh, people under some sort of influence. But again, I'm from a small seaside town in the south. To me, a broken wind in town is a shocking crime. So please don't let it stop you visit this beautiful city. And as with any destination, be aware of your surroundings and stay informed about the areas you plan to visit. And exercise general precautions. Travel and enjoy.